sleep in a cool bed and burn more body fat. All right, guys, let's talk about this. Well, that's Are you a telling great, me I've been doing it right the whole time? You have. That's so, a great commercial for chili. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. No, there's... Okay, so are you guys familiar with brown fat and white fat? Uh, yeah, I've heard I've heard some podcasts. About I thought that. that's been debunked, like the difference of that, like the whole, you know... No, no. Brown Dr. fat Ron burns. Patrick talks about it a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, uh-huh. no. So brown fat is, got, is used to warm up the body. It's more thermogenic. And studies show that people and animals with more brown fat as a percentage of their overall body fat tend to be leaner. So it's like the, I guess for lack of a better term, the fat burning fat. Mm. Now here's the cool thing, right? So you can convert the, you know, the white fat. That's what I thought was debunked. No, that's that's true. You can actually, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So there's like plasticity with, uh, with your fat. So your, some of your white fat can convert to brown fat, which then becomes more thermogenically active and healthier and makes you uh, makes it easier to get leaner. So are you saying one of the ways to do that is by sleeping in a cooler yes. bed can actually convert some of the white fat to brown fat? Yes. So there's a few what? Yeah, there's a few interesting things, right? So sleeping in a cool bed first off, uh, it significantly reduces sleep apnea. So people with mild sleep apnea, just cooling the bed down or cooling the room down, that'll help. So it's good for your health there. Increases REM sleep and also Sleeping in a cool bed or a cool room creates more of this conversion of white fat to brown fat. So the theory would be that that would help you become leaner. More brown fat's better. No, that's interesting because I think that I would have thought that the benefits of that come from your body trying to regulate its temperature. Therefore, it's got to work harder to raise your your temperature, right? Well, so that's, if, I, if I sleep in yeah. it, because I sleep at like 55 degrees with my chili. So I imagine that my body through the night is trying to keep me warm. And so it's having to work more than it normally would in turn, i.e. burning more calories. Yes. So that's where I would think the benefit comes from. Well, that's the fat burning benefit. So you get all the sleep improvement benefits was my point, right? So a cool bed it significantly improves sleep quality across the board. And we know, uh, it's a matter of fact, that sleeping better... You are leaner, you're healthier, you build more muscle, better hormone profiles, or to put differently, mm-hmm. getting suboptimal sleep it causes you to store more body fat. You don't burn, you don't build as much muscle. Hormone profile is not as good. So there's that. So, but if we remove that, just forget that for a second. What you're saying is is absolutely true. So uh, there's a study that they did called the where they they actually studied how brown fat is uh, converted or how we end up developing more brown fat from sleeping in a cooler bed. It's not just eating chocolate ice cream. No, it's not eating chocolate ice cream. So okay. they they did this with people and they found that the the that cold beds or cool beds stimulated this kind of brown fat uh, buildup or conversion, which is really interesting. So this is really cool. So they said- I wonder if there's a connection then to people that have like live in like colder states that they have more brown fat than other people that live in like areas like Florida or okay. California. That's a good question. Mm. Now, now the, to, a good point around that is I, it's not going to offset like eating yeah, of course, bad, yeah. and, right? We're talking about like small difference here, right? We're not talking about like crazy amount. Like a workout is going to burn a hell of a lot more yeah, calories. Yeah, like if you live in Miami, you're probably more self-conscious about looking good and you know, all <laughs> so that that's, stuff. That's a yeah. bitter motivation. Yeah, just like showing your body without your clothes on. <laughs> Yeah. So there, you know, but, but besides that you sleep uh, every night and you do it for the, your entire life. And it's, it's a significant portion of your life. I don't know what the number is, but it's a, ch- a huge chunk of your life is spent sleeping. So if you could every single night for the next, however long sleep in a cool bed, um, could this be significant over long periods of time? I think so. Be- just mm. because of the amount of exposure and how often you go to sleep and how long you sleep. So it's a pretty big deal. Now, I personally noticed a couple effects from using the Chili uh, Pad or the you know their, their devices, the Uller. In fact, that's the one I use. So for people don't know, it's a, it's a pad you put over your mattress and you put your sheets over it and it uses water to heat or cool the bed. There's no EMFs, so there's no. It's not the the part of the device where it's you plug it and everything is not on the bed that you're sleeping on. So low EMF, it's water cool, water warmed. What I noticed when I made the made the bed cool is yes, I slept better. I also noticed less inflammation. I woke up less stiff, more energy throughout the day. Now, as far as the fat loss effects, I you know because I control my diet and, and exercise so much, I didn't notice that. But these studies are really fascinating. That this yeah, is another another benefit of doing this and it's the most effective way of of cooling your bed because some people can cool the room 
but they, I don't know about you guys, but mm. I generate so much heat sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like I'll end up doing this thing where I sheets off, then I get cold sheets on, then I'm hot, then sheets. But with the chili pad, it's it it if you set it, let's say at sixty degrees, it'll keep it, it at sixty. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like it's just cold. If you start to go. You well, know, that's the biggest benefit I noticed because, yes. you know, I, I do sleep hot, but also I'll, I'll wake up. I'm more prone to getting up and then having to go to the bathroom or, you know, rolling over and I'll kind of wake up and mm -hmm. look around uh, when I'm I'm hot when I'm sleeping versus like uh, when it's cool and the, the temperature is that, that nice, cool, even distributed cool. Like I, I it's the deepest sleep I can get. Yeah. Well, if, if, from an evolutionary standpoint, it makes perfect sense, right? If we, we evolved without uh, temperature controlled rooms, it, it probably got cold at night. Um, so it makes sense that this is how, I mean, everybody knows you sleep better when, when it's cold versus when it's hot. Yeah. Um, so it makes perfect sense. And then the way that the, that your body wakes up, it, there's there's a couple things we do that are super unnatural. One is when we wake up, it's a loud alarm clock right out the gates, and it's super loud. Yeah. Then we get up and we switch the lights on, boom, We're like staring at our phone. Yeah, that's not nature. Like you don't wake up with a super loud unless something scary happened. Yeah. So you know what you could do with these this these new devices is they could slowly warm you up to get your body to naturally wake up, and then I combine it with an alarm clock. That slowly glows. I still simulates. haven't got that. You guys all have that, huh? Yeah, it's so awesome. You have awesome. it too, Doug. I have it, but I haven't re really used it. Oh, it's so it's, awesome. It's, oh, you it's have kind it, but of you don't use it. Programmable. It's hard to read. The most. At least yeah. the one I have. It's hard yeah. to read. Yeah, they're 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 not that hard to to to. <clears throat> but just read the thing. It's super if, easy. To if figure Sal out. figured it out, I feel I like know. I was going to say. Go on. Doug still needs me to come over and program his VCR. Yeah. No, but it it's like simulates the sun rising, and so you kind of wake up. No, you guys were talking about it. I think it was a year or two ago, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. But I, I mean, I wake up pretty pretty naturally in the morning. The only time I have to is if I set like my alarm for like really early. Do you not set an alarm? Just wake up? Yeah, I just, for like what time we get here right now, like the, I'm up by that time because Max is up by that time. Oh, earlier, I need so. all the help, like all the aids, all the things <laughs> to get me up. And so like you guys know me and the, the whole Cup Zero and like everything involved with me getting up is, you know, this, this whole process. So yeah, I have like that sun rising effect. I have the heating up effect. I have, you know, the first thing that I do is just like, uh, I have all my clothes already set ahead of time. So I have to like look for things oh my because God. I just, don't have it. They don't have it until yeah. I get in my car and start driving. You know what I hate to say? I hate to say this, but I I would bet money right now that all of us, except for maybe Doug, have, have apnea, some kind bit. of sleep apnea. Damn it. That's, oh, a, that's a, I, first of all, I've shared rooms with Probably, all you guys. Probably, but yeah. You guys snore like I can't even understand. But I'm a side sleeper, so it's somewhat, you know, like I'm sure it's a little bit better yeah. than on my back, but yes. I, I yeah, you have me there. worried about that because you've said that to me, but it, Katrina tells me I don't snore, but then I get situations like that. I do know- You're more relaxed when I'm in there with you. So. So, so it is. <laughs> <laughs> I normally, I, I I, if you I do snore, it's normally either like an allergy or I'm sick or like I'm exhausted. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. we did something like that. I think that was, you're talking about the trip where we went out and talked all day and yeah. things like that. That tends to get me to snore like that. But yeah. I, I'm afraid to get tested because this, yeah, this is a stupid reason to be afraid to get tested because sleep apnea increases risk of like heart yeah. disease, heart attacks, strokes, like- terrible for you but i'm afraid to get tested because i don't want to wear the, the I, I know this is so dumb i sound like no, such an idiot bro the freaking nose thing that you with the tube and i everything. do not want to turn in darth vader um also when we had dr Ruscio on like the reason why i knew about the didgeridoo is because of that fact like, i just don't want to put on this uh mask i would rather uh become like you know a hippie on the streets like doing a didgeridoo <laughs> in order to not wear a mask so i can sleep better yeah apparently the 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 skill of playing that strengthens the muscles in the yeah tongue and the throat and helps prevent sleep apnea yeah it helps sort of like set it uh so it doesn't uh your tongue doesn't are there other back. things besides the didgeridoo thing whatever that thing is like the uh being lean yeah, yeah there's just yeah remember that study i read a long time ago that when people gain body fat their tongues get your fatter? neck too like is it just body size? fat though or just like mass too M muscle mass in the yeah, neck too. Muscle yeah muscle mass because i was gonna say i i know when i was up to like 230 240 i was snoring and so I think that there's definitely a, a sweet spot for my weight where my body wants to be. In well, also, I'm the heavy breather now, apparently. Yeah. It's, Doug's it's, always on me. Doug about it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even realize I'm doing it. Dude, that's it sucks. Hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, I mean, look, this is very interesting because if you know those people who are into fitness and health 
focus heavily on exercise, uh, nutrition, um, maybe hydration. And sleep, is it tends to be a little bit on the back burner, mainly because you get away with suboptimal sleep, especially if you're fit and healthy, especially if you're young and you drink a lot of caffeine, which a lot of people in fitness do. And but it's it's the truth is sleep quality has such a profound it's as profound mm. of an effect on your health. It's where all the magic happens, really. It, it is as a diet and exercise. Yeah. And so if there's something you can do to increase the amount of thermogenic fat burning fat on your body, even if it's a couple percent, but you sleep every single night yeah. and you do for the next you know however many years you're alive. Just doing this thing, I feel could have a. Well, I think effect. I think that's just like a nice little kicker. I mean, I think focusing on your sleep is so impactful in your life in itself. Like, even if it didn't have any fat burning effects, I think yeah. the, the value in getting a good sleep routine and trying to figure out how to get the best sleep you possibly yep. can it pays you back yep. tenfold in everything else you do. Yep. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.